Now that we know a little bit about what ozone is and how it's measured, let's take a ride on one of NOAA's meteorological balloons to learn more about our atmosphere. Okay. Here we go. The Earth's atmosphere is surprisingly thin. In fact, two-thirds of our entire atmosphere is located below the tip of Mount Everest. What? I had no idea it was so thin. The atmosphere closest to the Earth is called the troposphere. This is where weather happens, and nearly all the clouds you see are located. It's relatively humid and gets colder the higher you go up. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere. This transition point, called the tropopause, is somewhere around 36,000 feet, though it's higher at the equator and lower over the north and south poles. Commercial aircraft like to fly somewhere around here in order to be above most of the weather and turbulence in the lower atmosphere. I do not like turbulence. As we move higher into the stratosphere, the sky begins to turn black as the air gets even thinner. Only special aircraft can reach these heights, and the pilots require pressurized suits. In these cold reaches of the stratosphere, naturally forming ozone likes to gather. I see them! There's a lot more ozone up here! Yes, most of the atmosphere's ozone can be found high up here. We call it the ozone layer, and it's critical to life on planet Earth. How's that? All of this ozone absorbs the harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun before it reaches the surface. A little bit of ultraviolet radiation still makes it through, which is what causes sunburns and the damage that can lead to skin cancer. That's bad. My parents make me put on sunscreen so that I don't get a sunburn. That's really good advice. Thankfully, a healthy ozone layer already did most of the hard work filtering out the most harmful bits before they even reach us and the plants and animals living their lives on the surface. What would happen if the ozone layer wasn't healthy? That's a great question, and one that humanity had to confront as a species when we discovered we were damaging the ozone layer. What? We were damaging the ozone layer? Yes. Some chemicals used in air conditioning, refrigeration, and industry were found to destroy the ozone layer. How did they figure that out? Some scientists were concerned about it, but it wasn't until the 1980s when scientists measuring the atmosphere over Antarctica discovered a hole forming in the ozone layer. Oh my goodness. Let's take a trip down to Antarctica, where measurements have been ongoing for nearly 40 years now to monitor the ozone layer and its recovery from what we did to it. Let's go!